Hello, my friends. I hope this email uh, voice video recording finds you well. I decided to make a quick uh, screen recording for you guys uh, to be able to check out some great new inventory uh, that was listed recently. I wish I would post more videos up, but you know, they're very complicated when you actually show the items in hand, but they're much easier if we just visit my site, trustedcoins.com, then we click this visit my store button and it opens up my eBay store. So what is interesting that's been listed recently? If we search the term Jerusalem, we will get a lot of different cool coins. For example, Pontius Pilate. He was the one before whom the Roman governor of Jerusalem, let's say, before whom Jesus Christ was brought to be crucified. That's the Easter story. There's a couple different types of the Pontius Pilate. They have different dates for the emperor's reign. So this is how we know this type with the text that says LIH is year 18 of Tiberius reign and we could put it into 31 to 32 AD. It is believed that Jesus was crucified around 30 to 33 AD. So some people like this type, but he also issued a different type for the Pontius Pilate with a wheat wreath. Here's another interesting coin. Um, I'm just trying to maybe show you. This is a coin from the time of Augustus. Right? Very inexpensive. You could also put it in offer. This is another procurator that was issued from 8 to 9 AD. I would invite you guys to explore a lot more by just following the quick, simple directions and searching for this term if you guys wish to. Because each listing allows you to actually explore the whole ancient historical era of Jerusalem from its beginnings as a Jewish kingdom to uh, being under the yoke of the Roman Empire and to the Jewish-Roman War where the Great Temple, it got sacked and looted and the gold and the silver was brought over to Rome, including also slaves from that unfortunate uh, event and uh, that money was used to build the Flavian Amphitheater uh, which is called the Colosseum now. Outside the Col Colosseum they have uh, the historical um, frieze or uh, statue in the column, it's called the Arch of Titus and it shows the conquest of Jerusalem. But for a while these people were uh, free and proud nation from 66 to 70 AD and we have several years for example most bronzes are either year two or year three so let's look at this nice example over here so this leaf got to be facing downwards but you see the year two it doesn't have a little cap on top of the vase and then there's the year three type uh the year three type let's see this is the year three type you see it has a little cap on the top this one's also interesting this is the proper leaf rotation on this one um so we see that was struck from circa 68 to 69 a.d so this is the close to the end of the war and uh jerusalem is surrounded vespasian and his son titus were um you know sieging the city and then it was announced that nero committed suicide and vespasian was hailed by his troops to be the next emperor of rome so he had to quickly rush back to rome and he left his son titus um to finish the war which i believe was ended uh, with the battle of masada uh speaking of that i have a modern medal i have a lot of israeli medals 
Um, let's see, Masada maybe. Is that correct? Yeah. So they've issued the coins with also the the, the Masada. It, it was actually a fort that was built by Herod the Great. So this also I have to show you guys. Physically also it's beautiful. This is of only one of about 50 pieces known or so. This is the year four silver shekel of the Great Jewish War. So towards the end, money is running out. Uh, the, the city has been besieged for months. And uh, the people with their last silver, they took this to, to the mint in Jerusalem and out of their devotion gave their last to issue one of these coins. So this is a very rare piece, but nobody has to collect this one when there's such a wide availability of year two and year three. And this one is a very rare one, a year four also bronze piece from circa that time. So uh, nobody has to collect that silver one, but that's interesting. So we have these types, these types. So going back to my point, what you'll be able to do from each one of these listings is explore, let's say, the term Jerusalem we just did. Or we could ch check out coins of John Hyrcanus. John Hyrcanus um, was uh, the ruler, the Jewish king of uh, the Jerusalem area for a while. So here's one with very clear, legible inscription. So what do we have on here? We have a double cornucopia. Now, let me see, maybe something better. Maybe this one is nice. Okay, John Hyrcanus, right here. So what you have is the double cornucopia, which is a symbol of plenty and prosperity, with a little bit, a little pomegranate in between. Also another great symbol of the area. They used on the coins a lot of symbols like wine grapes or the wine leaf that we saw in the Jewish war. And you see, this is basically a coin with a wreath and the Jewish king's name written in a specific way in what is called Paleo Hebrew, which also translates to modern Hebrew. You guys would need to get the book. Um, David Hendon's David Hendon Guide to Biblical Coins. This is where the reference comes from. I use this one, version 6, apparently uh, version 5. Oh, you could even get it at a discount. And now apparently there's also a version 6. I don't know if he didn't, if he uh, renamed the numbers, but when I do the uh, listing, I tell you where it was in the 5th edition where I found it, and also in the 3rd edition. So what we have here is a beautiful coin from circa 134 B.C. But another interesting thing to note with these coins is that um, people talk about the parable of the widow's mite, right? So what's the story of the a parable of widow's mite? See, lesson of the widow's mite, right? Is a poor widow woman comes in with her last two coins, like maybe enough to buy like a loaf of bread for that day. And she hands it in. And these other guys were, I'm just paraphrasing this if I understood it, but there's these uh, richer gentlemen uh, that, you know, put in like lots of donations, you know, maybe dozens of coins, maybe gold, silver, right? And they're criticizing this woman. And uh, apparently Jesus speaks out and says, hey guys, um, you know, she gave her all, you know, for you guys, you know, all these, you know, uh, great donations is just a little pennies from your pocket. So um, th that's the that's the parable of the story. But we have to also understand this is that nobody says the specific coin that was put in the collection box. 
So basic, the basic idea would be uh, any of the coins that circulated in that area would, could have been the, the coin that they used. Um, because they were all, you know, the bronze crew to denomination. And these coins, they kept circulating. So f moving on forward. So you have uh, the co coin type could have been a John Hyrcanus, Alexander Janinus, and maybe up to uh, uh, maybe th these coins, Marcus Ambibulus, Valerius Gratus. So the idea here is this, guys. Uh, to learn this stuff takes a long time, and you have to obviously have an interest in it. But if you get the book, and if you read the stories, the historical references in there, you, you actually might be surprised how interesting it is. So let's, for example, check out uh, coins of Porcius Festus, who was the Roman ruler under Emperor Nero. See, see it says here, N-E-R-O-N-O-S, Nero-N-O-S. So Nero's name in Greek. So that's kind of interesting. Well, we have to understand also the context of uh, Nero being ruler at the time. He was wanting to build a really great palace, right? And um, what he did was, at first, he also debased the currency. So the Alexandria, Egypt, tetradrachms, right, of Nero had lower silver content than the previous ones before. Uh, let's see. Let's go back here. Uh, Nero. Search thing in the store. Nero Alexandria. All right. So let's say an Alexandria Egypt coin. This one's really cool. So it has the um, ship on it. So what, what happened on the Nero is that he recalled a bunch of coinage and I think debased it like, you know, by maybe 30%. So it, this still looks like a silver coin, but it has a lower silver content than possibly previous issues of the area. Um, and he started building a great palace. Uh, he started persecuting the Christians, uh, blamed them for a great fire of Rome. And um, you still have, the, you know, that historical context where after a, a big portion of Rome was burned down, he built a really great palace. Oh, this is the other version of the... Um, Pontius Pilate. Oh, this one's actually an auction. Time left. Wow. Okay. Very good. Somebody should buy this. Um, so Pontius Pilate, you also have this one that's dated to 2930. So um, it's a good idea maybe to get all, all, all three types. The barley, the one with the date L-I-Z, and the one with the date L-I-H. So we're just exploring uh, different coins here further on. Um, what else is interesting? Perhaps maybe coins of Herod. Herod Great. Right? So, this is a very nice example over here. Um, see, around over here, it says Herod, like basically short for Herod, and then Basi around. So, why was also Herod the Great, and where was he related to in context of history. Well, apparently it was under Herod the Great or possibly Herod Archelaus because those two were uh, one after the other. That, they, that we have the Jesus story where um, the Romans decided to declare a great census across the land. Um, and this guy is responsible for expanding the great temple's uh, complex. And what we know is the Wailing Wall is outside of that temple complex. And as, as I also mentioned, that um, fortress, the Masada fortress, that was built under him. And he also built a city, a coastal city called Caesarea, in honor of the Roman emperors, you know, Caesarea, Caesarea. And um, that was also an important town. So one of the reasons he was great is that he... Um, did a great, um, you know, building project. Um, but there is a story, uh, apparently, you might want to read more in the Guide to Biblical Coins because 
uh, he describes it very good, but I try to do my best. And where I would recommend you guys to, to do is to go to any of these listings, you know, search these keywords, and then check out these different coin types that were that are available. Like for example, Herod Archelaus. You see the 4 BC to 6 AD. It's believed that Jesus was born maybe up to 6 BC, 10 BC, or I don't, I don't know, I don't remember specifically. But this is kind of interesting, right? Uh, we have Herod Archelaus. Uh, we have a coin with a helmet and the grapes. Let's see this one, right? Uh, helmet, you know, with little plume and the grapes. So this is very interesting also, but when you could just explore around, you know, you could explore the Augustus. Then you could also explore the Roman series of coins that they issued in honor of their great victory over the Jewish people. Like they're known as the Judea Capta. You see that this is a, a weeping uh, Jewish woman, possibly? Yeah, sitting underneath a palm tree. There's a couple different design types and there's ones that were actually issued in the local area of Judea, like this one. Remember I told you Caesarea? So that the town that was built by Herod? Here's one of these coins that are Judea Capta. So it, we have Minerva, you know, the Roman version of Athena, crowning a trophy. And this was issued in the Caesarea Maritima. So very interesting historically, seeing the both sides combined together and learning that historical context to feel connected to that piece of history. That's one of those things also. Uh, you hold this coin, you feel like you're being also transported to that time period. It makes you think about it. It makes you, um, I don't know, I feel closer to um, our history's foundations. And the goal, my goal is always to make it easy and fun and for these coins to be uh, valued by collectors, you know, hundreds of years into the future. I don't know if you guys ever watch Star Trek, but I love it when uh, these captains, they have an old book or an old telescope from Earth, and they're like in 2500 AD or something. Um, so I'm imagining these things in, you know, colonies and space and people feeling historically connected to it and uh, valuing the history. Because history held in private hands uh, with these great collections that are built up, you know, over time and care uh, in families are some of the amazing things. So you, you'll also notice that some of the finest examples, they, you know, they get put in a collection and they get put away because people love them so much. There, there's a lot of different reasons that people uh, have to collect things, you know. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's very emotional. This is a scarcer type over here of Herod Archelaus. Um, and all our references in the book, so if you got the fifth edition, you could look it up there. Sixth edition might be different. I still have to get that book. It came out, I think, uh, last November in 2021. Um, yeah, that's, that, that's, that's one of the interesting things, and maybe perhaps another type. Uh, there's, you can uh, view other, see other items, and search for Jesus' birth. Uh, this is a very interesting, actually, coin, right? Um, that apparently, according to this author over here, I cite him. Dr. Michael Molnar describes this stuff that basically put that on this Greek coin that there was a constellational event, you know, that we recorded, let's say, in the Jesus Christ story. And these coins, they were issued... Um, a after that event in honor of that, you know, great event. So I would recommend reading over this. So this is a very interesting uh, connection to that historical period too. What I also have is a lot of coins possibly you might like of Antioch. They have uh, beautiful designs on them. And um, that, that was one of the coins that was from there. So, Antioch, this is a beautiful one. What a beautiful classical head of Zeus, and Zeus seated 
with the text beautifully put, uh, amazingly preserved, and from 56 BC. What's interesting about these coins, you see these dates over here? They date from the, let's say, the city's foundation or from the dynasty's foundation. So that's how we're able to actually accurately date a lot of coins is because, let's say, if we look at the Roman coins, it would be, let's say, the second consulship of that Roman emperor. And we know if you assume consulship of a certain year, uh, the fourth consulship would be a different specific year. So this is very interesting, beautiful. So guys, it's very easy to access my eBay store. I tried to do my best here uh, for you guys to make it fun and uh, exciting and, and much easier to just put a, put a whole collection together even. You know, just browsing these different types. So you can collect the Marcus and Bibulus, the first century emperors. Those are also very in interesting. There's um, on YouTube, I think I saw it on YouTube. I Claudius. So the whole series apparently, right here is you could... Uh, <laughs> watch this whole series that's set in ancient Rome kind of interesting it's a drama uh, this is apparently Augustus and then you have their Claudius and a whole bunch of other different guys and uh, gets into the intrigues so if you guys want to watch some free YouTube video that's always kind of cool anyways uh, getting back to the point um, I hope you guys like the presentation because it does take a lot of work and you guys with the feedbacks, I really appreciate this. You know, people leaving the, these uh, beautiful ones. Can we just click this? No. Anyways, guys, my site is uh, trustedcoins.com. Click there to visit my eBay store. That's my details. That's me. Um, talk to you guys soon. Check these coins out, and I hope you're as excited about them as I have been presenting them uh, because I think it's a very interesting uh, historical time period to talk about, an area that's very important. Uh, it's still geographically and politically important to this day, thousands of years later. Uh, very interesting how almost like the same things. But see what happens if we don't learn history, we are doomed to repeat it. So what I find us to be is keepers of the history, you know, People that can appreciate the stuff, that can tell the story, and w once you have something like that, and you, you know the story behind it, why wouldn't you want to just collect it and, and learn more and explore what, you know, for you know hundreds and thousands of years has been coin collectors. And right now, we have a great opportunity with all the great information right at our fingertips, maybe even on our iPhone, just quickly searching, finding it easily, understandably. And um, yeah, it's up to us to keep this history and enjoy it and send it into future generations and, you know, space, the final frontier, guys. Anyways, thanks for watching. Talk to you soon. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Bye-bye.